Well, OJ and I are uh, here again in the ham shack. Move him over here. And uh, I've got a new uh, toy here. It's a duplexer. It uh, allows me to use HF um, to one antenna and, and or um, VHF and UHF uh, on another antenna by splitting off of one channel. This is for uh, multi-mode radios that uh, have it all on one port or for a single feed line to uh, feed a VHF antenna separately uh, and a UHF antenna separately. So uh, let's see what it looks like. It's an MFJ uh, 916B made in Taiwan. OJ is still trying to help me in the background here, but we'll ignore him. So uh, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> and uh, 1.3 to 225 megahertz on the uh, bottom range. And 350 to 540 megahertz on the top range. It's got little feet because it's intended, uh, this particular one's intended for indoor use. Um, so it just sits on a desk or something. Uh, like this. And uh, this would go to the radio and these two ports uh, would go to in this case the 350 to 540 megahertz region and the 1.3 to 225 megahertz region here. So you could have uh, 6 meters, um, 2 meters and uh, theoretically at least um, the uh, 220 band as well, but we'll get back to that later. Then uh, uh, this would be for 440 or 432 and uh, the uh, UHF uh, bands up above. This is the MFJ uh, 916B. It's a duplexer, 1.3 to 225 megahertz on the left bottom port there and on the right 350 to 540 megahertz and at the top is the common. This is the top view of this uh, particular item. In this view I've taken the bottom off so you can see the circuitry in here. Looks like it has one, two, three, four coils on the uh, right side there for that part of the circuitry and uh, only three on the left side so it's a multi-pole high pass and low pass filter like we discussed before. This slightly uh, closer view shows the uh, seal around it is not really good for this unit uh, based on what we have here. However, I think with uh, some silastic uh, or um, silicon um, we, we can uh, seal this thing up uh, fairly well. We'll have to take a look at that a, a little later. In order to uh, test this I'm going to isolate each port. I'll put a uh, a load on one port and take the other uh, side and run it into the spectrum analyzer and then common will come from the tracking generator which is on the left there. Uh, first one uh, will be the 350 uh, to 540 and then we'll do uh, swap the uh, attenuator that I'm using as a, a load. It's got 30 dB so its return loss is quite high. Um, and um, see uh, what happens on the other side as far as the uh, pass characteristics. As you can see we have uh, pretty good loss characteristics here both on the attenuation side and on the pass side. 0.393.55 which is probably a little on the high side given the uh, nature of the uh, spectrum analyzer I'm using. Uh, and uh, over 55 dB or so on the uh, of attenuation in the low band and uh, on the high band you see a little bit of ripple there from the spectrum analyzer but uh, it's also in the 50 dB category. So this uh, looks pretty good. Here we have the uh, HF and uh, VHF side shown with the uh, attenuations. And here we have the high frequency side shown uh, expanded with the attenuations in the chart below. 
this is the, what we have to seal up if we're going to use this thing outdoors. And like I say, I'm only suggesting this temporarily till I can uh, no, actually afford to buy in a enclosed unit. So we take out the uh, four screws here, take off those uh, rubber feet so that we don't uh, have to deal with those anymore. And I'll show you the rest of it here. Okay, now I want to use this thing outdoors on the antenna mast to split the uh, VHF and UHF up on the uh, mast about halfway up the pole with the uh, cable going around the rotor being uh, one going to 440 or 432 and the other one going to 2 meters. The way I propose to do that is to use this uh, MFJ unit which uh, we have looked at and uh, the only thing is that this is not designed for outdoor use. Now what I've done is if you look carefully here you can see that I've got some uh, sealant that I put around the connectors here and on this one as well and I put these guys on here just so I can see how these uh, will be when they're finished up. A little help from the cat. Um, and as you see there's quite a little gap here so I can put more sealant around the, these which I will do. And the same thing on this side. So that should uh, last for at least a, a year or two. Um, and then on the back of course uh, I've got these guys so those are going to come off. We don't need those. I don't need to shine it and like that. But anyway, so those will come off. These will come out. We'll drill holes in this guy. So they'll be the same as the holes on here. And uh, then we'll lay this uh, on there with seal it all the way around. Screw these screws in and then seal the screws. And that way we'll be able to uh, seal this thing pretty good. It will be mounted like this on the mast. And uh, this, excuse me, will uh, be used to hold it to the mast. So this is going to be mounted in that, that position. So that uh, the cables will come in from this side and, and go into here and go out here to uh, the one side that's the uh, four, 400 meg side and the uh, 2 meter side on this side so the cables will loop up that uh, can also provide a little drip loop here so I can come in and that will tend to keep any moisture off of it any moisture that comes on here should go right over the sealant and down and drip off We'll see how well that works. Uh, um, I don't know how that would work in snow country. Uh, so you might have to buy their $60 version of this, which isn't in a, in a uh, box. But I'm going to try that here in uh, California weather. It might, uh, might work out okay. Since I plan to uh, mount this outdoors, I'm doing a little weatherizing here. It's probably only good for about a year because I'm just using uh, aquarium... Uh, goop, this Loctite uh, clear silicon. Probably should be using something uh, more like uh, Celastic that uh, has a little bit better characteristics, but this will do for the moment and uh, I'll probably put this uh, unit in a box with a preamp at some point and a relay uh, in the future anyway. So Set, set that aside and uh, this is already, uh, there's a lip around this that I've already sealed and then pushed this down in and screwed it down with the screws so that uh, we have no problem with uh, the seal around here. Uh, I've uh, taken this unit and um, I've made a couple of notches here for the uh, bolt. So the bolt will go through like that. It can't can't move backwards or forwards. Uh, so that'll uh, take care of that situation. And these are countersunk so that the screws uh, go down in and are uh, basically flat. And uh, I also obtained some larger metric screws to use with this. Uh, happens this uses metric screws apparently. 
anyway these have uh, these fit and uh, screw in correctly and are long enough to go through both this plate and that plate to go into the previously existing holes here uh, that are already in the box so what I'm going to do uh, at this point is I'll seal up around the lip here uh, and uh, make sure that I <clears throat> don't uh, get goop into this part then I will uh, on the back side of this I'll seal around here so that's sealed put, put this down of course and uh, align the holes and then uh, screw the screws in And um, just a comment here is that I, I made these slightly oversized, these holes slightly oversized, so I have some slop. And as you, as I screw this down, when I finally put the uh, sealant on there, I'll be able to move it around a little bit uh, as I screw these in until I get them all started correctly. Don't want to strip any threads here, obviously. So get each of them started here. That one went in crooked for some reason. There we go. This one's a little crooked too. So I can move around the uh, plate a little bit at this point and do the usual opposite corner thing when uh, tightening down the screws for evenness of pressure. And uh, so once I get the uh, goop on there, that'll take care of that. Then uh, I'll flip it over and I'll put a bead all the way around here. You see I've, there is a little bit of a lip there that I can use, so I can put a bead on there to help seal the, uh, the unit. And then, uh, of course, uh, What I'll do with the bolt here is put this on first, put it through there. That will have this uh, this uh, plate here keep from bending the ears when I tighten down things. And then, of course, I have to put the uh, hardware on and, and screw this together like this. Um, ultimately, of course, I'll do that up upstairs uh, on the uh, antenna mast itself. But anyway, you get the general drift of what the plan is here. Here we have the final uh, installation. You see the uh, thing, uh, the diplexer, duplexer uh, in between the two antennas, cable going to one and cable going to the other, and common cable coming down around the rotor in this case, uh, and down to my transceiver. And uh, both of these uh, frequencies are in, in the IC706 that I have come off the same common port, so there's one feed line that feeds this whole arrangement.